What's up guys? I'm doing a little mu music notation here in the Finale 2007 notation program. And usually I do this on my Mac, but my Mac died and I got a replacement, but the Finale 2007 doesn't like the replacement Mac. It it likes to be loaded on the old OS 9, uh, whatever you call that, workstation. And so I'm uh, working on a little laptop. It's not very optimal. It's very small screen, but uh, we're going to do what we can. And what happens in these... Uh, uh, think in these uh, pieces I write is I write it in the on the Macintosh and then I uh, after I'm done writing I make a little file and then I load it into these notation programs into the finale notation program and then I clean up the score this is kind of what it looks like I've already drawn in some of some of this stuff here but uh, this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of a raw, raw idea of, of what I've recorded into the computer already. And then my job is to uh, make it look better <laughs> and add all the dynamics and uh, whatnot. But a lot of times you'll get like transcription errors and quantizing errors and uh, things of that nature, and it takes a long time to um, uh, reconcile all the errors. So, for example, uh, we have uh, dotted eighths with sixteenth notes that should really be triplets. So I have to go in and fix that. So let me try to fix that uh, right now. And here is my fix for that. So I'll add some rests and try to turn all these guys into eighth notes or as many as I can before it falls off the screen and then we'll turn these into triplets and then I gotta go back Turn those into eighth notes, and again turn that into a triplet. So there's the fix for that. Uh, let's see what else can we fix. So same story there, just needs turned into triplets. This was written in 4.4, but it's got a lot of triplets. Uh, the main melody has kind of a 4-4 four, four type feel, but it's being played over a bed of kind of ostinato triplets in the, often the cello and viola parts, uh, you can see, uh, let's see. <laughs> go back go back towards the beginning so you have all the cello and, and viola doing triplets and every once in a while you have the violin players helping out with some triplets but as I said on top of that you have like a main melody that's kind of more in the 4-4 four, four type style which kind of provides an interesting texture. This, by the way, is the uh, three nightly dances I wrote back in 2007. Uh, the main part here, uh, these first several measures, is just a little thing I wrote as more like a film music theme back then. And then I turned it into, I combined it with some other little themes or melodies 
that were kind of dance-like and turn it into like a little concert piece. And then, uh, 10 years later, or however long it's been, I've reworked it for a full orchestra before it was just for a studio-sized orchestra or recording-sized orchestra. And now it's for a full concert size orchestra so now I've got to completely redo the notation from scratch and you see I've already filled in some stuff here right now I'm just kinda randomly uh, filling in stuff and then as I get closer to fixing things I'll actually go page by page and add all the dynamics and whatnot but right now I'm just kinda fixing transcription errors so let's do it. Let's do another fix here. Let's see. So this again should be a triplet, but it turns out it turned into a dotted eighth and a sixteenth note. So let's fix that. That and our triplet thing at. So there, there's the fix for that. And then uh, for whatever reason, the finale program, no matter, even if you put a, like a 16th note uh, ending uh, in a measure, it's always going to count it at the front of the measure as a, a whole note. So then we got to kind of do a similar thing where I just turn it into a smaller note here. It might have been like a sixteenth in the in the original music program, but the musician will get the idea that it's just supposed to be a short note that ends right there. And let's see what else. I don't think these are going to be uh, slurred because I think this is mimicking the piccolo is mimicking what the trumpet is doing right here. I'll have to clean this up to uh, put the uh, third trumpet down here and try to figure out what the um, what the first and second should be doing. Should the first and second just be doing this top uh, little line here and then we'll add the third player to do this or should the first and second be going along in unison and then um, should the second drop down and do this little little piece here we'll have to figure that out at some point I don't want to do it right now but I will do something easier which is again fix the uh, fix the little eighth note there and we can fix the eighth note on the horn there too and I'll have to load up my uh, original music file to figure out if there should be a, a, a eighth note between these two notes or if it if this is actually a full full size quarter note or quarter to the equivalent of two eighth note tuplets in there well, we'll figure that out later right now I'm just trying to find easy things to do that don't require me powering up my other computer so let's find some more easy stuff here's some more easy things again no matter how small you make these uh, values of these notes in your act in your when you're actually writing the music in the music program uh, they always the finale always turns it into um, basically quarter notes so again let's keep working on that so put some eighth notes in And do the same for this guy up here. And then we'll turn all these into eighth notes. 
Let's Yeah, and where are these? These are clarinets, I guess. No, it's a bassoon and a clarinet. And uh, so we've got our secondary little melody here. Um, and so you want kind of short notes over that. I'm just going to put uh, over the woodwinds. I'm just going to put tenuto markings on these short little notes. Because if you if you actually look at the original music file, these aren't even eighth notes. These are like little sixteenth note stabs. Bump, 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 like that. So I'm just trying to indicate with the tenutos. Uh, to make it a little bit shorter, in all of my uh, notation, I, always, I, I sometimes substitute uh, uh, staccato marks with tenuto marks. I don't know how legit that is, but that's what, I, that's what I've been doing for years and years. And then let's see, what 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 is this right here? This looks like a... Uh, trombone okay so here's another thing eventually I'm gonna delete this uh, um, staff out it's when I record these in here I'm recording um, like there's in my music program there's like uh, trombones that are solo trombones then there's uh, trombones that um, are like uh, trombones that have been sampled to where it's three trombones all playing the same note at the same time. It just gives a beefier type uh, texture. And then the tube is by itself. So what I have to do in the in the notation program is to divide up all my uh, things that I put in my original music program and and so that there's two tenor trombones and then there's going to be um, a bass trombone and a tuba on on this line so for example let's actually before we do that let's turn these into uh, eighth notes programs are supposed to make it easier for you to make a score but uh, it seems seems like all the little fixes you have to do um, I don't know it's probably not a wash but it seems like it's a lot of work I, I'll, I'll write a piece of music and it may take me uh, you know it may take me a couple weeks or a couple months to write a piece of music but then it takes me another couple weeks or a couple months to actually uh, do the mu music notation part to just get it into a format that the musicians can rec recognize. And so let's figure out how to move some of these notes uh, up to where they need to be. So I'm adding the so what just happened there was I put the tenor trombones up here and now we have a bass trombone and we have a tuba. I was probably um, just substituting the tuba part when I was writing it. I just threw it in the trombone part because once you have all these instruments in tutti you can't really tell what if it's a trombone or a tuba playing in the low register anyway. So, let's try that one more time. There 
There we go. And then just repeat our process. And then the Macintosh version of that actually has a little button. Of course, the whole screen format's different than my Macintosh, but it's close enough to where I still understand what's going on 75% of the time. But uh, in the Macintosh version, there's a little button, so I don't have to keep clicking up here at the thing there's usually extra buttons uh, that are comprised of all these guys here that would actually let me do the note mover note moving uh, or note mover tool so there's our trombones and our uh, tuba and now we just will mimic the what what the other brass is doing we'll put some Accents on there, and just uh, some indication that we're uh, the note should be relatively short. Uh, we didn't get any. We didn't get any accents on these guys. There we go. Okay, let's see what else should be should we be fixing. Timpani, I won't worry about the timpani right now. Mm. Looks like the strings are okay. Another thing on my, I use some very old uh, uh, samples for my string section, and it there's no like key switch or anything where I can switch between um, staccato and 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 uh, different types of uh, bowings, so I end up having to use like a staccato track and a, uh, I don't know if you call it a legato track or what you call it uh, to make the string parts. So then. Again, anything that's staccato, I gotta move up to the actual part, and then after I've got all the information off these staccato staves, I can delete them, and we'll just have uh, the more orthodox five uh, staves for the for the strings. So we're trying to figure out what else to do here. Basically working on the first four pages of the score. I guess I could make a uh, make an eighth note out of this heart part, but I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. But let's just do it since I saw it. <laughs> And these heart parts are terrible. They, uh, you can try to, like, like I, when I load the music into the notation program, it never does do the heart part right because usually the harp's doing, you know, some 32nd note or 64th note or some type of odd, uh, odd amount of notes within one beat and it jumbles the glisses on top of each other so let's see if we can okay here's a example of that so it jumbles all these glisses on top of each other and even if you try to uh, make the quantize settings more uh, more in line with what the part would actually be doing so let's see quantize settings so I've got it as a 32nd note, but may, that might not even be as good as what it wants. Um, but we can try and see what it'll do when we transcribe it for that. So it gives this, let's see if we can, gives this jumbled mess of, of stuff. So I'm going to have to go back 
and put like um, just a C D E flat F G A uh, B flat and have it go all the way up to this F and uh, anyway, I guess we could do that now just to give an example of, of what that's all about let's see let's turn this into a eighth note and get rid of that E flat Oops. I keep hitting the backspace on this computer, but it, on the Macintosh, when you hit the backspace, it it uh, deletes the note. But then I have to search on this little laptop keyboard where the delete is. It's a little tiny button at the top. So it's kind of like you know if you're working at your desk and. Uh, you have your trash can on your left side of your desk for five years and you always throw your trash over there and then all of a sudden you uh, move the can over to the right side of your desk but you're still throwing your trash on the left side of your desk that type of kind of a long-term learned behavior that eventually needs to be corrected I don't, I don't know I, I may end up just buying the uh, finale 2017 or whatever is uh, whatever the latest one is just so I can use the finale on my Macintosh again but that costs money and if I can do this without having to pay money uh, right now then I can put it off later which sort of saves money in the long run and definitely saves it in the short runs but let's try to figure out how to turn this harp gliss into something the harpist will like so just remember it there's an E flat and we have a B flat these are this score is pretty uh, consonant and pretty easy to to look at on the page, it's none of my normal uh, uh, dark chromaticism where everything's basically chromatic. And, uh, so I don't know. I may not. I might not even put like uh, pedal markings for the heart for this because it's so uh, it's so uh, apparent what the heart should be doing. Let's okay. Let's uh, figure this out. So it's C through B is what we need. So I'll start. Let's start making a uh, just gonna turn these into uh, turn these into sixteenth notes. Here, let's, let's get rid of this thing here. Okay, let's get rid of this thing too. And that should be an F, F, and then we need our E flat. So let's figure out where the flat thing is. <laughs> so that was it. There we go. And then we need a D down here. And we've got a C, and now let's uh, use our note mover to get rid of all the notes we don't need. That'll do it, and then we need to turn this into a C. So there we go. We've got seven notes representing the seven uh, repetitive strings on a harp. And now we need to make it all sit in one measure. 
so let's let's do that. Sixteen or seven sixteenths will take the place of four sixteenths, and since it's a harp glyph, we're not going to put a number underneath. There's that, and then we need to oops, put a little line on it. There we go, and then let's save that. So we've been doing a few things. I always try to save it after uh, I do so much. Otherwise, something will happen. It'll crash or something, and then you lose you lose 20 minutes worth of work. And. And we'll also, let's see, are we in score mode or are we in, let's see, okay, so we're in, there's two different modes on this thing where you're either looking at the page or you're looking at the score, and you can't use the text in the score where it, it won't uh, attach it to the actual heart part, so when I actually go to, uh, extract all these parts to make individual uh, parts for the individual players off this off this score it uh, if I would have uh, wrote gliss in the page format it, it wouldn't have assigned the little uh, text or my little gliss text to the heart part and the heart of course he already knows to gliss probably because he's we've got that line but just to reinforce the idea, I'll write the gliss on there. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And then let's look down here. Look, we've got something else to fix as far as uh, a transcription error. But I think, yeah, that'll just, that one worked out pretty good because it's only six notes in the notation program. Can figure that one out pretty good. Oops. I don't want that. You want that. There we go. And then uh, this is another bump a bump 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 type pro uh, type uh, phrase right here. So we know we need some more uh, eighth notes or eighth rests on these bump a bump bump type parts so let's make those there we go and um, the this again this is in the staccato uh, what do you call it? The uh, same staccato violin sample. So we don't actually need all this information. Uh, so what I like to do is so as not to confuse me, uh, as if, as if I've missed something when I'm going back to delete these uh, staves at the end after I've harvested all my information off the uh, staccato part. I like to you know make sure. Everything is the exact same as what I already have in the part I'm going to keep. Make sure everything's the same, and then I just delete these off. So when I do my final look through, it doesn't confuse me into thinking that there's uh, pieces of the score I missed or pieces of information I missed and, and didn't put them up in the on the stave I'm going to keep. So there we go. Bump ba 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 bump. And oh what's happening here? There's um it looks like we're doing it in octaves with the violas one octave below. So actually what I could do instead of deleting that, so let's let's bring those back. Yeah, uh, programs got caught. There we go. <laughs> so let's bring those back actually. And what we'll do instead is we will 
Uh, we'll move these down into the second violin and let the second violin do that. Like that. We still need to put some eighths on there. And then so it, so we kind of get an even uh, um, even orchestration as far as uh, the two lines, one's one octave below the other. What we're going to do is split the second violin players in half, and then half will do the violin part, and then half will do the viola part. So half will do the uh, octave above, and half will do the octave below. So let's see if we can work on that. Let's see. First, we have to break some eggs to make an omelet here. There we go. And then let's see what's the best way to do this. The best way to do this is to turn these guys into layer two notes. This thing has four different layers. I think you can put four different layers all on the same stave, but you have to tell the notation program what you're doing. And so there's that get our note mover back. This time we're going to copy and merge on our note mover. That way we don't destroy the viola part as we're merging it up to the violin part. There we go. And then we'll turn the violas back into layer one. There we go. So that, now we've got uh, now we've got a second violin part, and of course we're going to have to figure out what's going on here. Uh, a lot of this stuff I've uh, um, it, it's a lot of uh, kind of uncomfortable uh, parts on the violin. You've got these uh, uh, fifth interval, fourth interval. Um, repetitive triplets and what I've done is um, orchestrating this I've let it uh, happen in, in a manner that where the player isn't just playing over and over and over again uh, the the triplets where they're not going but to infinitum uh, I've kind of spread it out to where one player will be going ba 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 bum ba 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 bum ba 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 bum ba 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 bum and I haven't put the extra bump in there yet. I'll put the extra bumps down there too. And so uh, so each stand the players will be alternating those triplets um, and it'll just give the effect of 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 just the ba 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 but it'll actually be the player each individual player will just be seen bump 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 and it'll be a little bit easier to play like that it's hard to do that or it's annoying to do that for uh, measures and measures and measures this is a uh, kind of film music type stuff where it's you know you're kind of stuck in the same mood or texture for long periods of time you're not uh, doing uh, drastic, drastically different uh, textures or whatnot, like you'd be doing in a classical music piece. So it has to be kind of more consistent, uh, kind of like um, you know, like a pop song or something like that, where it's just a consistent texture and timbre, uh, just so they can, uh, you know. 
Well, I won't explain it. It's too much to explain. But here's kind of here's the piece. I don't know if you can hear that or not. So you can hear my little uh, triplet thing. So yeah, it's just a film score type type idea where it's just a consistently consistent texture. And so you end up having fairly ostinato type type ideas going on here. And again, I'll I'll make it to where the uh, each stand will be. This will be divided up on the stands. That'll take that takes forever to to make that. So I could give you an example of how long it takes. <laughs> So let's try one out. Um, okay, so first we go to our note movers, and then let's see. Oh, yeah, we need to switch back to delete after merge. And this is how we split up a part. Oops, split up a part so the musicians don't get fatigued. There we go. And then let's see. Now I want him to land on this note and I want him to land on this note. So let's see. He's going to land on G. He's going to land on G2. And he's going to land on F right there. So let's put a. F right there, and a couple, couple rests, triplet, and we'll do the same thing for the, or actually we're in tenor clef, so I might have said the wrong note, but you get the idea. Let's see, where's the triplet? There we go. So there's the triplet. So I've got all the, what I want each individual player to do. Now I just have to combine it back into one part. So let's do that. So there we go, and, and oh look, the eighth note, note rests are uh, kind of jumbled up right there. So what we can do about that is click our measure, and then plugins, move rests. We're moving in layer one. We'll move them up a couple steps, and there we go. So that's. And that's just one measure, and I've got millions of measures of that to repeat that process a million times. So that's how I do that. If you noticed, I've at the beginning of the score, I've I've already done it a lot for the cello player, and, and some of the uh, violin players up here. And let's see, what else can we get into? I guess they're doing the same thing here, except it's already kind of split up. I guess we could fix that, but yeah, 
I have to go to work here, so it's 12:30. So let's just stop right here. But that gives you an idea of uh, what I have to do, and I, I basically have to sit here for months to make these scores to fix all the little all the little problems that pop up.